Hello, hello. Happy Monday, everybody. Let me just make sure I'm good here on my audio. Give me one sec. All right. Happy Monday. We got a, all right. Sounds like we're good to go. Yep. All right. We got a super, super important topic to talk about today. Give me one second. Let me just fix some behind the scenes stuff here. Um, Two seconds, actually. All right, good, straight. All right. All right, we are good. It's, you know, Mondays. Happy Monday. You already know how Mondays are super crazy. Okay. Um, yeah, I chose the best day out of the week to do lives. All right, but. It's the best way to start the week with some good old fashioned embroidery education. And today's topic, the push pull compensation, is probably, I would say, like probably top three items we have to know in embroidery. Even if you don't digitize, even if you send out your files to get digitized, all right, that push pull. That's like our number one enemy, definitely. Our number one enemy are those gaps, all right? Because no matter how good a design is, all right, when we go from like flats to hats, design shifts, or from one type of fabric to another type of fabric, all right, these little tiny gaps, right? I I'm pretty sure everybody goes through it. Um, a lot of has to do with the push pull compensation. All right. Uh, not only just for gaps, but also with text when we have different sizes of text, when, when our text is looking kind of little wavy and it's not supposed to look wavy. All right. So push pull compensation, it kind of affects us in different scenarios, different types of projects. And if we kind of have an idea, all right, if we could, we could kind of anticipate our push pulls. All right, it makes life a little bit easier, especially when we're uh, coming up with certain designs. All right, so let me just put my name right here. Um, check in here, Ever Romero, San Diego. All right, so. If you go ahead and type in who you are and where you're from, all right? I know we got a jam-packed house today. Definitely, definitely super important topic. And I know this type of topics, right, um, push-pull uh, compensation, it's not like the sexiest topic you can talk about, right? It, it, it's really the stuff that nobody talks about unless you're in that situation where your designs aren't lining up or your or something is not coming out good then we have to kind of evaluate it but like i said this is really like the building blocks of embroidery right here okay like so this topic if you're not um if you're not an embroiderer or you haven't really seen things stitch out and you haven't gone through the headaches of push pull compensation then Right. It might not be the most entertaining topic. All right. But I'm saying that this one here, easily the top three and most important once you get into the details of embroidery. All right. All right. Uh, we're going to start quick because I got a lot to put out. All right. Um, just real quick. Let's say hello. Good afternoon. Happy daylight saving time. So it's still daytime right outside here. I'm in sunny San Diego, right? I'm like wearing shorts here. All right, uh, Karen from Missouri, nice to have you here. Cindy, how you doing? 
Cindy from Texas, TMG, Florida in the house, Orlando, Aldell, Audrey from New Jersey. All right, Jesse. All right, right. Barb, North Central Minnesota. I already know it's cold over there. I don't even have to ask. Leanne, Florida in the house. All right, right. Bam, Martha Shank from the V8. Virginia in the house. Vonda, Juan Garcia, Puerto Rico. All right. And then I'm super excited for this one too. Hey, how you doing, Ben Baya? Super excited for today. All right. I got a uh, stitch outs. All right. This is kind of what we're going to work on today too. I got like three, four designs. This one here. All right. Now uh, I'm going to put this template. All right. So I'm going to put this template for free download right after we're done here. You kind of make your own. So as you can see, it's already tested. Good to go. I just added the text at the very end. So I'll put the free download without the text. All right. You could put whatever you want to put. All right. Sky's the limit. Um, really, that's a lot what I want to do. I want to do a lot of just templates and make them available. That way you can add anything like your 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 business or your customer. I um, And you'll see like where I got this template from. All right. It was actually from a soccer team or a soccer design. And you'll see where I come up with that, all right? All right, we got Ricky, Colorado in the house. All right. Pam, Plano, Texas. All right. And then, yep, this is what it's all about. All right, Cindy, hit it right there. Perfect. The building embroidery education, all right? And then there's three things. On learning embroidery, right? Because we always start out with the theory. Okay, theory is all good to know, right? But we gotta actually stitch it. We actually gotta stitch out, right? So it's the theory, it's the digitizing, and it's the stitch out. Those three, right? That's like the pyramid of learning embroidery. That's what we're talking about the the building blocks, because you can learn theory all day, all night. But if you don't actually see it stitch out, if you don't actually see it, right? Or here, I'm going to have samples. If we don't actually see what we're talking about, I'm going to make, it's going to be all like um, imagination, right? It's like, hey, picture this, picture that. But when you have actual stitch outs, then everything starts making sense. All right. And then we got Flip 66 Caprice. From Vegas all the way from the OC. All right. Yep. Super, super important topic. All right. Um, Mary. Bambaya from Tunisia. All right. Viviana. Hey, how you doing? Robin. From Minnesota. All right. We got the West Coast, Midwest, East Coast. Lisa. China Spring, Texas, Pam Miller, how you doing? Grand Rapids, Minnesota. And then Cindy got some Ultra Solvi. Yep, you're gonna have fun with that. Coyote Embroidery from Chicago, Chicago in the house. Tanya, Alabama, all right. So super jam-packed house today. All right, let's get busy today. Um, let's start off with, all right, uh, we'll be coming back. All right. Yep. And then uh, just a reminder, we'll be coming back to watch this one on YouTube. Yep. So the videos always available on the replay on YouTube. All right. It's We're also on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, catching us on Facebook, uh, we're on there too. So you can check that out. T-Town in the house. All right. Um, real quick, quick announcements. Super, super fast today. Uh, we got the Mighty Hoops free shipping. Of course, everybody loves Mighty Hoops. Makes life 100 times easier. All right. Um, definitely going to shoot more videos. I got more hoops. I actually got one of my favorite, my brand new favorite hoop. All right. That I want to talk about. 
I'm super excited. I already have my garment ready with the new hoop that I have. All right. So look out for that video. Hopefully I shoot it this week. All right. It's just so much stuff happening. Um, I definitely, even though I love making the lives, of course, I like doing the regular videos. Um, so I'm trying to shoot three videos for this week till the next live. All right. So in between. All right. So look out for that. We got the candle thread. All right. Super, super nice uh thread and then you'll see it here actually this hat also is all right I'll, I'll do some zoom ins uh with the other camera i got the camera right here on the back uh we're gonna do some quick theory uh talk about some of the cool stuff of the push pool then we'll get into the digitizing and then um we'll all make it we'll all make sense out of it when we look at actual stitch outs all right so real quick Let's go to the camera. Bam. You see? Bam, right here. All right. Let's go straight to it. And all right, we're on the camera right here. All right, real quick. All right, real quick. When we're talking about push pull compensation. All right, and this is stuff that we're definitely going to go over and over and over and over so many times that the more you see it, the more it makes sense. Cause I still learn from it. All right. So let's just talk about theoretically, right? So let's say like here, right? We always start off with the old fashioned sand stitch. Okay. So if we have our sand stitch, we know right so sand stitches they're really like zigzag stitches right it's going from right to left to right to left all right with jumps in between so all in here is just being jumps there let's zoom in a bit a tad bit all right i think we're super good right there all right we've got a good view right there so you can see how All right, so what happens here, every time it hits a side here, all right, we already know that the needle goes in, connects with the bobbin, and it pulls, right? So we're getting pulls. So every time the needle comes in, this side is pulling in, right? So when we talk about the push pull, this is the pull, all right? I know this pin's a little light. Let me change it up a bit. All right, so this is the pull side because guess what's happening here? At the needles, it's gonna pivot. So we'll call this the pivot area. All right, very important. This is when we're gonna do a turn, All right? It's gonna come from here to here, pivot and go back the other side. As soon as it pivots, that's where we're getting our pulls. All right, so we're getting our pulls every time comes in here connects pulls the other way all right that's a pivot 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 so by the end of this by that by the time this sand stitch is stitched out we have pulled our new size right i'm kind of over exaggerating just so you can see all right but in reality our sand stitch eventually looks like this all right it's a little all right actual actual size here all right so on on software we're out here Okay, and in reality, we end up here, right? So when we're talking about the push-pull, right now we're talking about the pull. So have these pivots where these needles is making a turn and going the opposite direction, that's where we're getting this pull effect, okay? And these threads, okay, the thread, it's it's an actual 
it, it has actual weight. So it's like a, it's it, it has foundation and it has a weight. So when we lay this down, they're actually laying down, right? They're laying down nice and neat. Okay. They're laying down. Right, nice and neat. So when, by the time we see it, they look nice and flat, right? And what's happening is, they're actually pushing each other, right? They're trying to, they're trying to make their own, like they're trying to rest flat here, right? And as they rest flat, they're actually pushing each other outwards. So even though this area is getting pulled through the center. Our sides are pushing out, getting situated, right? So, this middle is getting pulled in, inward. I put these arrows wrong way, but really, these arrows are going inward. And the sides are pushing outward. So, push. Right, so in embroidery, no matter what design you have, okay, right here I started with a very basic sand stitch, but no matter what, wherever our pivots are happening, these are our push or our pull, and the opposite, so the long end where our where our where our needle, where our thread is laying, or you could also call it where our stitch angle, all right, wherever our stitch angle is going, so here, let's say zero degrees, right? The stitch angle is at zero degrees. That means our push is gonna run perpendicular to our angle, okay? so. Wherever our angle, and then I don't know if you remember geometry, right? But perpendicular means the 90 degrees, right? So wherever our stitch angle is, that 90 degrees, right? That's where our push is happening, all right? So I don't know. That was my favorite subject in math was uh, geometry, right? So that's how I kind of remember it. Whatever our stitch angle is. The perpendicular, whatever's running 90 degrees to that stitch angle, that's where our thread is going to push out. Now, this one here is kind of like the, the very basic example. We also have an example, let's say, with a square, right? Let's say we're doing a fill stitch. So this applies to both sand stitch and fill stitch. So let's say, um, so on a fill stitch, the most important part is, or very important setting that we need is our stitch angle, right? Whatever. So let's say we're running at a 45, right? I know my lines ain't 100% perfectly straight. All right, so if my stitch angle is at 45 degrees right here, all right, all right, then it's gonna look like this, all right? Our fill stitch is gonna look like that, but our angle is running 45 degrees. Um, all right, let me see, I'm a little light there. All right, so our pool, since we're, since we're running here, our pool is wherever, we're pivoting, right? All these areas. These areas right here are gonna wanna pull inside. That's why mostly a lot of the times you're gonna get gaps on uh, fill stitches because you got a lot of areas that wants to pull right then you start getting these awkward shapes
right? So in reality, and a lot of times this this pool that's happening here, so we'll call that the pool. It's so tiny and minimum, right? So tiny and minimum, but if we don't address it correctly, and once we start getting these gaps, then it's gonna affect the design, all right? And then our push, where is the thread going to push, right? So if our angle is 45 degrees here, our push is going to run perpendicular to that, all right? So our push, all right? So fabric's going to want to push towards this corner here, all right? If that makes sense, all right? So like I said, I got samples here, so we're going to look at it. Um, on the software and in actual stitch outs. All right, so circles, let's do a circle here, All right? Circles is another headache that we get. All right, let's see, let's say we're running at zero degrees, right? Or fill stitch. This is that old fashioned egg example that I know a lot of people seen, right? So if we're running at zero degrees, this is the reason why we get that egg effect. So if we're running zero degrees, all right? A lot of times uh, digitizers, they like going 15 degrees, all right? But for here, I'm using zero degrees, all right? So you know here, wherever we're getting these pivots, is where we get these pools, right? So pivots is where it's going one side and then it's gonna turn to the next side, all right? And if it's a fill, it would just run like this, all right? So it's gonna like about face and go the other way. So we're getting our pool here, right? Even though it's very slightly and gently, when you add them all together, you're getting a good gap. All right, and this is why we get that egg effect. So a lot of times you're trying to make like a perfect circle and you're getting that egg effect because these sides, they're pulling in. All right, and then our perpendicular to zero degrees. So up here is our push. All right, so our my purple's dying right there, but all right. So really, this is push pull on paper. This is push pull in a nutshell, right? So what do we have to do, right? That's where that whole push pull compensation comes from, and the definition of compensation. Give me one second, because I actually pulled it up before we started. All right. Um, I'll read out what the, so on dictionary.com, I'm checking it out. And it has a couple definitions. Some, the ones that I like that kind of go with uh, this topic here is called uh, compen to compensate or compen compensation to counterbalance offset be equivalent to, okay? or to provide or be an equivalent, make up, make amends. All right, so let me show you what that's all about. All right, so in order to counterbalance this pool, where now it's gonna start looking like an egg, okay? So if we were to keep our design like this, right, after the push pool, I'm kind of over-exaggerating it, right, just to kind of, Highlight it, but our perfect circle is going to look like an egg. All right. So, of course, when we're digitizing, we got to take this into account. So, when we digitize it, we got to bring this down. So, this is the counterbalance. Okay. The counterbalance is to push this down a bit. Okay. And since this is going out, we're going to pull this out a bit here. 
so when it's all said and done all right and then once again i'm kind of like over exaggerating it all right we'll do something like this where we're opening up the sides and we slightly push the top and bottom in to get a perfect circle okay i kind of over exaggerated it on this but if we don't counterbalance compensate that's where the whole push pull compensation comes from okay so there are different ways to deal with push pull compensation actually there's three main ways all right three main ways and let me go into give me one second let me just transition camera All right, hold on. All right. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, I know that drawing, right? It was so much chicken scratch and all crazy stuff, all right? Uh, it's all going to make sense once I, once I kind of talk about it on the software, all right? But for the most part, that's really the main three shapes that we have right we have our bar um our sand stitch bar we have our rectangle or anything that's similar to a rectangle and then especially our rounded object right our rounded object a lot of times it wants to create weird shapes all right so let's get a new design here so I said there's really three ways to counterbalance um, push pull. Okay, one actually I have some. I have some samples here. All right, so let's let's actually start with this first sample here. All right, so I got the software here. Let me just set it up with our grids. Bam. Hey, how you doing, Crafty Puerto Rican? Got Crafty Puerto Rican in the house. All right, we got more people. Canvas Apparel. Adi Girl. I got screens a little far from. Let me see where the. A Gotti girl, been looking forward to this class. I'm having a hard time with the concept of digitized push pull comp in mind. All right. All right. So now that we talked about uh, the theory of push pull, like what's happening, okay, let's talk about how to counterbalance because that's what push pull compensation is all about is we got to counterbalance and make up for that. Okay. All right. So we're here in the software. All right, we're here in the software. Uh, this is Wilcom, but a lot of the settings, all right, a lot of the settings should be similar with different softwares, all right? Uh, it might have different names, but really the whole theory or the whole settings should act all the same, all right? So here we have this cool looking shape. I'm going to adjust it a bit. And the reason why I like this design here as a sample is because anytime we have uh, colors or shapes budding each other, right? So right here, super zoomed in on this side, right? This is where pooling and gapping usually occur, right? Wherever two objects are budding each other um so let's go ahead let's digitize this so i'm just gonna this is gonna be a fill stitch all right so we're gonna do fill stitches uh let's actually measure this uh, 8.46 millimeters uh the size the this size i want to say it's a two millimeter let's just unlock all um yeah two two millimeters 
All right? So perfect example to show this, all right? So in a perfect world, all right? In a perfect world, all we have to do is trace this object and then we could send it to, to stitch out, right? We could just go like click here, right? Uh, click. Hold on. Oh. Yeah. So since it's a fill stitch, uh, there's we're gonna have to tell it what angle do we want to go with, right? And then we could just close it here. All right. Uh, let's make it this color so you can see it. Um, H lets me adjust it. So I I want to follow this angle, like to follow this shape, just so it could end there. So that is, I want to say it's a 45. Yep. Right. Start. We can end it up here. Start it here. All right, so in a perfect world, right? That's one thing about when you're printing, like just with 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 uh, normal ink, you don't really have to worry about this push pull, right? You could just you could just design it according to the shape. But in embroidery, we have to keep in mind. Uh, so here, right? So you could see my shape. My outline is going down, but my thread is extending that point. And then I could put the dots so you can see where my dots is. So here, this is my pivot point, right? Where you see this dot, you can't really see it that good here, all right? Um, but let's see, if I were to put it black for a quick second, right? Bam, if I change this black, you can kind of see a black dot right there. All right, hold on. Oops, go a little lighter. Yeah, is that the gray they used on song? Yeah, all right. Right, we'll just keep that right there. Looks a little darker. Huh? All right, there we go. All right, so here where you see the dots, that's our pivot. And then we talked about our pivot is where that pool is going to occur. Right. And then you can see how it's extending and it's extending because here on my settings on the push pull, it's by default. It has it at point one seven for the most part. It works. But if we were to take this off, OK, that pivot is going to go right where I traced that. Right where I traced it. OK, so I went back right to where I traced it. Right. So in the in the in the embroidery world. When we stitch it out. All right, we know it's not gonna, it's gonna hit this spot, but it's gonna pull it a slight bit. Okay, it's gonna pull it a slight bit. And guess what's gonna happen? When these two objects combine and butt up to each other, there's gonna be a big gap right there. All right, for right now, I'm just gonna digitize it. Okay, let me show, let me go on the big screen. So right now, I'm gonna digitize it with no push pull with no overlaps all right and then i'll show you how it looks like i got a stitch out here on how it looks like with perfectly traced okay perfectly traced without any push pull all right so but all right so the way i would do this okay then we just do we could actually um this one matches this guy up here. So we could uh, duplicate. 
let's change this black. Um, so we could change it from, let me see, um, 90 degrees. We could just use these two right here. All right, and then one more 90. So I thought it was actually 180. Um, bam, all right. Um, then we can just pull it right here. Usually I plug in some numbers perfect, but right now I'm just gonna do it quick right here. We can just line this up, right? All right, bam. All right, now let's do this inside. This one, these middle ones, I'm gonna change it up a bit just so we could have full coverage. All right, bang. Let's just do digitize close shape. Um, let's see. All right. Just, and then uh, on Wilcom, and then most, most, uh, graphic design and digitizing software. If you hold down control or shift, it'll it'll keep your angles perfect, right? So here I'm holding it down and it's giving me a perfect 45 degree angle. And then here it's gonna give me a perfect zero degree, perfect 90 degree right here, all right? All right, and then the same thing. Um, duplicate, change this color. Um, minus over the 180. All right, right here, we got it super perfect. See, let's bring it down a tad bit. So we're not gonna have any overlaps, okay? We're gonna see what happens when we do that. All right, this wasn't perfect here, but we could just grab one, two, then just bring it up. Oh, I didn't like that. Should have, oh, there it goes. All right, got that one. Okay, all right, we're good. Good, get it perfect. Select these. And this one, all right, that's fine. All right. All right, so in a perfect world, all right, it would just stitch perfectly, all right, and then here, got him. All right, you're absolutely right. So in the software, you could actually start seeing the gaps even before it stitched out. So in the print world, right, in the print world, this would be perfectly fine. Like here, right, it would just stitch out however we um, however we programmed it. But let me see, they all have zero pool compensation. All right. So let me stitch it. Let me show you here on the camera what happens if we go this route and we just. So let me set up this camera again. All right. Uh, so I did some different colors just so you could kind of see the difference. All right. Uh, but we're gonna use this trace as our template, okay? From here, we're gonna add more settings and settings until we get it how we want it. All right, 
Hold on. I'm actually just zooming in on this camera. All right, give me one second. I know you can't see it right now. Just setting up the camera real quick. All right, let's take a look at what we got. Bam, all right. You see? All right, I think you got a good view right there. All right, so what do we see, right? Exactly like how we anticipated. All right, so if you kind of look at it, all right, actually, let me find the actual design so we could study it. Copy. Delete, paste. All right, so we all agree. We see gaps, right? Exactly like how we kind of already anticipated. Well, we can see, so you could see, the, we can see the pool, right? The pool is where the gaps are. Now, do you see the push, right? The corners. So let's see, let's focus on, let me put the colors. I'm in the software right now. And I'm gonna put the colors exactly like how we're seeing it on the, on the stitch out. All right, well, a little variation. Um, let me see. And this one was black. All right, let's go to the software real quick. Um, what I'll show you. One. All right, this is how we're looking here. Okay, so let, let's focus on this one here, right? This red. This red run here. So when we look at our stitch angle, right, we are, it's telling us 135, 135 degrees. So running perpendicular, that's where our push is going to be. So in this corner here, all right, we're anticipating fabric to get pushed in, inward here. Okay. And then all this side is where our pool is happening all right so let's look at back at the thing so if you're looking at that corner all right in that corner where that red and the gray meet right in that corner that we just looked at you could see how that red is pushing right into that corner that's that push okay that's why there's no there's really not there's no gap there's no visible gap in that tiny corner right everywhere else so you can see, depending on where the angle, the stitch angle, whatever is running perpendicular, is right on that area. All right. So let me pull up the, by making some simple adjustments. Okay. So let me go big screen here. Let's talk about some of the adjustments that we can make, right? So. Let's say we're in a situation that we have that uh, that we have this gap, right? You're you're ready to finalize it. You get this gap, right? There's really three things that we can do. Okay, three things. Actually, let me show it while I'm talking about it. So, if you were in this situation where you have this design. You need to get it stitched out. You do this sample and you're like, oh, wow, it's not going to work. All right. It's not going to fly. So three things that we can do. All right. Another clue that I'll give you that I had here. I had zero underlay. Okay. Zero underlay. That's why you can see like it's it, the shape is not too. Right. It's not too nice.
All right, now I think I'm back. Let me know if you can hear me. All right, all right, check, check, check. All right, back on, back on point. Sorry about that. Oh man, all right. Yeah, yeah. My battery's good, but I don't know why it just disconnected. And then when you disconnect, uh, StreamYard automatically mutes you. All right, so I'm back, 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 back. Sorry about that. All right. So what I'm so what I was saying is, um, we have three items. Okay, so when we're in a situation like this and we got gaps, we have three things that we can do, right? You can either do one at a time or you could really, when you're digitizing, we should be doing these three things maybe together, all right? So a combination of these three items that I'm about to list to avoid gaps, right? Number one, by default, so this design doesn't have any underlay. Okay, and that's the actually that's the clue that I, I didn't tell you in the beginning. Okay, but it doesn't have any underlay, right? So purpose of underlay is to give our objects, our shapes, our embroidery um, a foundation, pretty much bones, right? We want to make so if we want a line to go straight, we need to put underlay to lock in that shape. When we don't put it, right, it's going to create kind of like weird or um, lines that are kind of wiggling around according to how that thread is pulling, right? So you could kind of see how, right? You can't really tell too, too much here, but really um, the thread is not super sharp. Um, I mean, the shapes are not super straight, right? And then and when I'm talking about underlay, right? Also, just like Cindy said, global underlay. Okay, you could add global underlay. It locks in the whole shape as a whole together, right? That'll minimize gapping also. So just by that little simple detail, we're already minimizing, okay? so. Let's go on the software. Right, so here, let's see. My settings, zero pull comp, underlay, no underlay on all of them, right? So just, just by adding, let's say, um, we're gonna add underlay, put a tatami with uh, edge run. That's kind of like my, my my favorite one here right and then just real slow this is what so it would do tatami so it's pushing that fabric out and then there's really no no like recipe of what's the best it's like the only way you're gonna know what's the best that'll work for you is by experimenting but you could see here so let's pause it right here so here I put, this is the foundation here, right? This is like the, the structure of our design, all right? So even before it starts stitching out this fill stitch, all right, it's already created this shape for us. So any type of shifting, right, our, our, our shape is still gonna kind of be locked in right here, all right? So this, this and even though I didn't add an underlay, that I mean, a global underlay. Uh, that's a um, that's an option that I have. Okay, okay. And then one more thing that we can do is add some pool comp, right? We could just add the standard pool comp, right? 0.17 is the standard pool comp. Now, when we digitized it, we didn't add. Oops. We didn't add any, we didn't do any overlaps. So let's see how much, okay, how much does this give us here, all right? So let's go to the camera, okay? This is still the same one that we have, so 
So right next to it, I have the one with the subtle changes, all right? So we just made some subtle changes right now. We added the we added the the pool compensation to 0.17 and we added underlay, right? So let me see. Bam, right here. All right? And then I'll show you both of them at the same time. But very small changes just occurred, okay? Nothing too crazy. We still see gapping, right? I think we see a little minimum, a little less gapping. So let's see them side by side, All right? Give you a second to look at it. All right, very subtle. Of Hold on. All right, like this gap right here, right between the gray and the black, kind of went a little bit less. Okay. I think our shapes. Okay, so let me see. I'll just give you a second to look at it. Actually, I could see a, I'm looking at it on the screen now. You could get a way better view on the screen, right? So. It made a subtle change, right? Subtle. Like the gaps are still there. All it did was minimize it a tad bit. Right. And then, uh, Cindy, would you finish each shape with, uh, would you finish each shape with a, I think you're talking about like an outer, like a border. That would be an option. Right, that could be an option. Um, and then, okay. So, if we're in this situation, what other, what, what else can we do? Right. What, what's our next, what's our next um, plan of action? Right. So, what I would say. Actually, let me see here. Give me one sec. Oh, oh okay. Actually, hold on. I was actually, um, I made a mistake with one of the settings. This one that we're looking at on the right, Okay, actually doesn't have any pool compensation. So all we did, so let me pull the, the software where I'm pulling this design from. Okay, so this is our design here. This is the first one. This one here is our first one. Okay, and then the one that we're looking at now on the right side. All right, so there are actually no pool compensate. The only change I made was I added underlay. All right, so that that's what it was. Sorry about that. So let's look at it. So the left hand side has so okay, so let's start from scratch again. The left hand, the left side, zero underlay, zero pool compensation. The right side, it has zero pool compensation, but it has underlay. That's what it was. Okay, so just with the underlay alone, okay, it kind of it kind of strained up our shape. A tad bit okay so it's a real subtle change that's what i wanted to show you here this house little small settings can start making little small changes okay it didn't cure it or it didn't uh, fix our problem right so now we go to the next setting that i'm going to change and all i'm going to do so on this third one here Okay, keep the keep the underlay the same. I'm just gonna add the standard, the standard pool compensation, 0.17. All right, so let's see what that does to our design. Give me one second. Hold 
Bam. All right. So here. Well, let me show you. Well, they don't really fit both on it. All right. So it solved some of our gaps, but really the like in the middle, right? In the middle, you see where the gapping is. But it's starting to close up, right? It's starting to close up just with that. So here, what we've done, we added that underlay, right? The normal underlay that we had. And now we brought in a pool compensation, the standard of 0.17. All right, so this is actually a good comment here. If I use default setting in hatch, I don't seem to have too much trouble with this. I've had problems with really thin fabric, but I'm doing knitwear yet. All right, so this is that. This is like the situation that um, Dr. Pedigin is talking about. All right, here, right, we have a lot of objects butting each other. Right, so we have more more push pull happening here. This is the standard. If we were, if we just had like two two shapes butting each other there's less push pull, right? But here, especially in the center, you kind of see in the center area where threads are butting against each other, different colors. Um, the standard settings are not enough for us, right? So in example number four, all right, so example number four, And really what I could do, all right, what, what could easily solve this problem, right, is I just add overlap to the design, right? Close the gap by just on the digitizing on our objects, just lift up. But what I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to play with the settings so the settings could fix our problem, right? But in reality, you can, right? Most digitizers, Simple fix is just like, hey, let me just lift up my design to close the gap, all right? So that's always the option, okay? But here, I'm just trying to do it with the settings, all right? So on this fourth setting, and these are subtle changes that I'm just kind of adding little small changes to the setting, all right? So you can see here my pool comp, I'm gonna bump it up to a 0 0.60. So the standard 0.17. And I'm gonna tell you why to me, to me, this is kind of like a sweet spot. Like if I wanna just for sure, for sure, 100% sure know that I don't have a gap, this 0 0.6 is what I'm going with, all right? And then before I show you that, all right? Jesse, excellent comment, right? That's what I would have done is an overlap, okay? So when you're digitizing, you could kind of bypass a lot of these settings. You could stay, you can keep the factory settings or the, the software settings and just anticipate it like you know there's gonna be gapping and just overlap them in your design, right? With experience, and the more you do certain designs, you're already going to know. Like your brain by default is going to say, hey, let me bump this tracing or this design or this object. Let me bump it up a bit. All right. So perfect comment there. Okay. Um, all right. So here, still keeping the same underlay. All I'm going to do with our push pull. I'm going to bump it to 0 0.60. And the reason why I like this number here, okay, this is where our, so this is where we're getting our um, overlapping here, okay? Reason why I like this 0 0.60, so if we look at it where it's overlapping, we measure it. Right, that's, that's like our, the only way to kind of know what we're doing is to measure it. 
So if we're measuring it from like this side to this side, okay, we get about 0.85. It's close to one millimeter. Uh, this is on the diagonal side, right? On the diagonal side, wrap. Not the, the diagonal, but from point to point, right? Because even though they're running diagonally, all right, we're about 0.85. Okay, it's close to the one millimeter overlap. Usually, you want a one millimeter overlap. Uh, we're getting that one millimeter like on this side here when we run it on a diagonal. Okay, but from here to here, and that's one thing. If you're if you're digitizing with the overlap, you you might want to have it the minimum. Okay, usually the minimum is a one millimeter overlap. All right, and then this is what I'm talking about right here. All right, so if you're doing the overlap, is there a formula as to which ones overlap, top or bottom? All right, so first is from the, if you do have a formula, if you have an overlap, sweet spot. So here we have it like at 0.85, but usually you wanna be at, one millimeter overlap and certain designs like when they're rounded usually it's like 1.2 okay 1.2 and then to answer uh the second part of your the top or bottom right who should who should be the overlap okay um so what i would say and of course every design is going to be different right but for the most part Whatever is running first, so here in my design here, my black was going first, right? My black was going first. So whatever's going first could be your long, your long object as in, let's see, H. Right, so here, since this isn't gonna be seen, right, let's say like this part, right? This part's not gonna be seen. We can pull this as much as needed, right? Of course, we don't wanna go overboard, but this one could go all the way to close that gap. So you want whatever's being covered to play the long role. Right, they're they're the ones that are gonna expand. We 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 have the ability to take it out of whatever actual shape it's from because it's gonna get covered. We don't want to do that to the top part because that's gonna be the visible part of the design. Right, so that that's how we. That's that's kind of like the formula. Whatever is on the bottom has more leeway to expand when we're doing the push pull. As you're going on the top, 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 then we wanna have the actual size of the actual design with the standard push pull. Okay, so here we got the 0 0.6 and let's see how we're looking like. All right, so. So this isn't the one, this is the one that we just did. So let me put it screen. Let me adjust picture here. All right, let me see. So I would say, uh 99 of the gaps closed up right 99 really closed up um my shapes they look straight okay of course and we're super zoomed in right we're like right there when i take like three when i'm kind of standing over it hovering it like about Couple feet away, looks perfect. Here on the screen, we're looking at it. 
with my camera on full zoom okay full zoom so we can catch every little small thing okay what i see here is i see a tiny gap between where the red where the red and the black so let me see where's my little got a little pointer right here right right here this area tiny gap right tiny gap right so what can we do in that what can we do in that situation right and really uh if what i like to do right because i don't know me i'm pretty sure other embroiders also right you're you're we we want to fine tune it till we get that design perfectly perfectly like down to every little last centimeter right okay here what we can do let's say that was one design right we're gonna be like hey you know what i could still do it better right i could still do it better right what we can do grab that black right we get into our reshape really it's just a matter of selecting one two and pulling it a little bit inward right a little bit inward it in right and then that's it that would cure it right so That would close that little gap. And then this is the perfect comment right here, right? Because I didn't want to talk about this. Magic marker, right? Magic markers are like lifesaver. Right. Now let me show you what I what I like to do. All right. Because everybody, every embroider, right? We need to have little tricks under our sleeves when stuff doesn't line up perfect. Okay, what I used to do, so I used to have my markers right here. I got like, let me zoom out a bit. My, my battery's gonna die in a bit for this one, but I'll change the, the batteries in a bit. So I had like my thing of all my uh, Sharpies, okay? But I stopped, I stopped using Sharpies, all right? Can you, can you guess why? I stopped using Sharpies and I actually went with show you. Oh, I don't I have them downstairs. But I went with just regular pens, gel pens. All right. Reason why I stopped using permanent or uh yeah, markers because a lot of times it bleeds to the other it bleeds it could bleed to the other fabric or the other thread and it's too it it'll change the shade of the color so a lot of the lighter colors well i'm trying to find oh here it goes got my big thing all right so like this one right black one is like one that we always use so this one is more right well i like this so unlike a marker where it has like a a fat tip this one here is super pointy so all you got to do we don't even have to all you got to do is like draw little dots on it we're not we're not affecting the other threads that's like around it all right we're just putting well let me make sure this pen works yeah all right so we don't need you just got to put little dots on it all right now and close it up and then every now and then you'll probably Right, this is, 
and you're not really affecting um you're we're really targeting the inside of the thread because sometimes you have these little white thing right the fabric is real light but Right, that pretty much closed it. Let me see. Did it close it? Yeah, it closed it right there. Right. All right. Um, so at this at at this distance, you could always find little small things, right, to fix. And then um, this is a good one here. Okay, for we're literally just putting little dots, right? We're not we're not doing too much to it. Yeah, it's gonna hold. It's definitely gonna hold. Okay, it's not gonna bleed. Uh, what? Because yeah, I, I'm not I'm not using this to make like a big spot area. Like you could see, it was just like a little dot that I put. Right, like like something. something on this magnitude right now that's a whole different i'm just yeah you're now we're doing too much right here right i'm just talking about little dots here if you do have a gap like that you could probably fix it but you might want to just fix it on the software when we're in this level little dot two dots here and there okay easy to to work with here all right but here Pretty much landed perfect. Okay. Um, I have these two examples. This one was, that one didn't count because that was some random stuff. Oh, uh, here is where I closed it. I closed that gap. Okay. So here, so hold on. Let me go back to where we were and let me show you something. Okay, because you can always make designs better and better and better and better. Um, Force embroiders were like our harshest. Crit we critique our work as hard as possible. But here, you can have some like imperfection, like this piece of the corner. It's kind of hanging out where it should be lined up with this black line, right? We got some, oh, right here. We got this little corner sticking out, right? So that's where in the design, we can make the adjustments by just pushing in, right? Pushing in our shapes, adjusting our shapes. And then at the very end, right? To the point where we don't need any markers or anything. Because we can use our pens, our markers, with one or two jobs, but if 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 that gap is reoccurring, you want to fix it in the software, right? We don't want to fix thirty six hats or shirts with something that we could have fixed in the software, right? So here, this is where I pushed in, right? We push it in. We push this a tad bit out, right? We're talking about like. A tenth of a millimeter just in. All right, so now we got it down packed, perfect. Okay, let me see. Let me see it on the screen. All right, so that's the key right there. So I'm looking at it at the screen, and everything looks like it's lining up perfectly. All right, so I like it. This was a logo ready to go. We could just mass produce it from this point on. We could just say, hey, let's go. Let's run it. All right. All right. Actually, let me let me change this battery right here. OK, I got. Because I have one more design I want to show you. Actually, let me pull it up. Design two. Oh, this one right here. All right. So while I'm changing the battery, let me kind of go over some stuff real quick. 
All right, so that example that I just showed you right now, I liked it because it was objects butting each other, right? Let's delete that. Where's my design? Oh, right here. Oh, actually. Right, so how many, right? We have all these sides butting each other. So it's kind of like a good, um, a good like learning uh, a good learning tool to use something like this right because even though most logos they're not as this uh, this many overlaps okay it's just good practice to kind of see it overall um, actually I'll post this one here I'll post this file, the final one, uh, as a download too, right after the show. So you can kind of see how I eventually, like my final settings to that one. All right. Um, let me see. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Slight overlap, like on that black. Right, you could see how it was missing that little tiny bit where we put those little dots. I just this is all the little uh, overlap that was required. All right, now let's talk about this one here. Right, so if you see my hat. All right, try to zoom in right there. All right, so this this was my uh, template that I used. So you can see how I, I use the template. So that's what I'm gonna do a lot. I'm gonna I have uh, like hundreds and hundreds of just like regular random designs like this, but I want to use the shape, right? I don't want to actually use the actual design. But you could see here, right? So on my design, um, instead of putting a soccer ball, right? You could put anything. You could put volleyball. You could put any type of balls. Uh, here I put a SD. So for San Diego. All right. So this is going to be my focus. Let me lower this. It gets real bright. There we go. Bam. See? I'm going to take pictures of it and show it. All right. But we do want to talk about gaps. See how close I could get. Uh, oops. Hold on. I'm messing up right here. All right, give me a second. I'm trying to like line it up. I had to turn down the light because it's too bright. All right. So let's look for gapping. No. So when we're analyzing this one, we want to look at the red border, the outside border of the red. We just want to make sure that it kind of maintains the correct sizing, right? Everything is like, all right. And then uh, this is directly on the hat. Bump up the light. All right. 
Yeah, this is straight on the hat. And then, this, yeah, that, that, that's why I wanted to put it on a hat. And that's why I wanted to use it because a lot of times with the circle, we already know we get that egg effect. Right. And then I'll have the template made. I'll, I'll, I'll post the template and then you could add your own thing. Right. You could add your own name and anything you want in the middle. All right. And then look out for it because I'm going to make a bunch of these, right? I got like hundreds of these templates and I just want to have it. And then we'll look at this design right now. Stitch count. Can you guess? Let's see if you guys could guess what this stitch count is. All right. It's a 2.25. All right. Let's get into the details. All right, let's see. Let me see. We're doing all right. We're good with time. All right. Um, Fifteen hundred stitches. Oh, I think that's way too high right there. All right, we'll see right now. Actually, I forgot. So, all right. So since we're using this as our template here, okay, it's just a matter of what do we want to keep, right? What do we want to keep? So what I like about these, okay, uh, uh, I like these like emblem type designs, okay? Very simple and they really, they really um, look Perfect, like on hats, on polos. Two ways we could, let's do this green part first, right? Where it says football club. Let's do this part first. So there's two ways that we can do this, right? We can just do the traditional feel. So a lot of times if I wanna go straight, I just push control, like I said earlier, right? This circle, usually with circles, put this graph back. Um, Put one rounded right here. This requires like three, three dots or three nodes to make a perfect circle. And then we'll put a straight one here. All right, you can see how it lined up right there. Straight line here, and then look for that center point. All right, rounding circle here, and then look for that bottom, so we could close it there. Bam! All right. Change the color so you can kind of see it. Uh, so two ways we can do this, right? H, put this stitch angle. All right. For this design, I didn't want it to run just one, one stitch angle. Okay. This is just like my preference, so I didn't, I didn't want it just to run like this. Okay. I actually wanted to run the shape of the design. So instead of using my regular uh, dig dig digitized close shape, or that's also the same as a uh, complex fill, you could use the complex turning. So my angles turn. So actually what I could do here, uh, add stitch angles, or you can see it's the hot key is control H. So I could just put control H, add my stitch angles here. So I want this one to go here, zero degrees. So it's like running the shape. All right, so push play. Oops, too fast. So you see how it's running right here? Bam. So this is like the fill stitch that I want. Kind of gives it a look. Really, customers might not even notice, but me as an embroiderer, this is the type of details that I look at that I like to see. All right. Um, one thing that I see here, right? We want to put our underlay. Um, Tommy. 
All right, actually, for some reason, oh, because I put segment. Oh, yeah, if you put segment, it won't let you do a tatami underlay. If you put it by shape, it will. Okay. But let's say you want to put a zigzag, right? Um, length five. All right, it's giving me different options. Now it's giving me like the options I want. Earlier, it was giving me long. So if we put this, man. oh, okay, I know why. Um, you can actually play around with these uh, size of your length. Okay, um, the oh, I know why. Let me. We're going to size this up because right now I have it at uh, 1.9. So let's put a 2.25. Make it a little bigger. All right. All right. Actually, it gave me the settings that I want. Earlier, I was fighting with these settings because it kept it. It was putting this length like at super, super long. It was making it like um, 12, no, 11. Had it at 11. Yeah, it'll do 11 too. But if you don't want that, that's when I had brought it down to a seven. So you'll see that like on my, on my sample that I have. All right, let me put it back to where I have it. Five. All right, sorry about that, but I was just noticing that. All right, here, let's dim this down. Of course, we could duplicate it, mirror it, right? Bring it down perfectly. All right, bam, T. All right, so these are like decisions that we got to make. Like, what do we want to keep? What do we want? All right, so uh, here I can make, I, can, I wanted to keep this circle right in between here. So to make a circle, all it requires is four nodes. So we go, and I'm looking at the zero. So you can see like my grid, since I know this ball is right at the zero. So I'm going to click one click here, one click here at the zero. Another click, and these are round clicks, right? Round clicks, bam. And my my secret to keeping perfect circles so they won't turn like eggs is the underlay, okay? Underlay, so I like to use tatami with an edge run. H started, um, uh, End it there, start it there. Bam, all right. And then here we could add the, the outer, the sand stitches, all right? Actually, I'm gonna go to the design right now. So, because where are we at? We're at the hour and a half, right? Just to go over it. All right, a couple things that I wanna highlight. So here, the circle one feels special. Let's see how big this one, 3.45 millimeters wide. Uh, you can see this offset is at 100. All right, and I'll tell you what that did. Actually, there's little small details that go with this. Um, this center part, okay, just. All right, let's talk about this center part right here that I have here. All right, what I like to do, okay, um, we can go with uh, column C. Column C is just going to keep everything like the same size, right? So here you can see like this little oval that I have. This is how 
this is how wide my sand stitch is, right? So you can kind of measure it. If you want to put like five millimeters, you'll notice how it got bigger now, I think. My little ball right here. Oops. Why? Uh, let's bring it back to three. But this is what I like to do, okay? So I'll click, same thing. All right, same thing. Um, actually, let's make life a little easier. We could grab what we just traced. We already know we've got a perfect trace here. And duplicate it. And we could turn this into a sand stitch, right? So right now, we're just following the line here, like this, this round circle. Right, but if we want our edge of the sand stitch to be here, what we can do, so we select our red sand stitch, and what we're gonna use is here, the offset tool, right? One of my favorite parts here, and we want it to, we want the outside of the sand stitch to be um, the circle, so we're gonna put, we're gonna offset it at a hundred, uh, at a hundred percent, and it's gonna push it out, right? So pushed it out. So you can see here now that line is perfectly on the edge. Okay, uh, the needle is going past that line because we have a we have a uh, pull composition point one seven. But if we take away that pull comp, right, it just lines up perfectly on that line. Now we want this thread, we want this one, this pivot, to match up here, right? So you could just bump it up. That's how I got this number here. To 3.45, right? So you could just bring it up a bit. So if I bring this up 3.45, right? It kind of connects it right there. So it's kind of like, close to the other one, right? So where it connects perfectly. Um, of course, now we're gonna have to add some pool compensation, all right? So let's see what I'm using as pool compensation here, right? Because when I'm digitizing, you kind of see my little thing. Let me hide my global underlay. So of course I use a global underlay for this design. All right. Um, you can see how I, like for example, this red part. Select this, hide others. All right, so here you kind of see what this one, I pulled, I pulled it. So I'm not like perfectly lined up with the ball. Cause like what we talked about the egg effect, you can see how I pulled the sides cause we are getting a lot of push pull. So that's why I pushed, pulled it here. All right, um, I'm gonna push play in a bit, but what I do wanna show you on hide all is the pool comps on some of these, right? 0 0.60, right? So that's kind of like the sweet spot that I used on a previous example. What I was saying is, let me go on the screen here. I like to digitize a, and trace the actual design and then add that 0.60. Okay, 95% of the time it's, it's gonna get me there. It's gonna get me like close to perfect, right? Of course, we're gonna we're gonna do a sample. You can anticipate where you're gonna get uh, where you need more overlaps. Okay, um, but for the most part, 0 0.60 is like my sweet spot, All right? And then Barb guessed that the hat that I'm wearing, 8,500 stitches. Uh, if you look down below, you can see how many stitches I have, 9,488, 
right? So very close, you're like a thousand, off by a thousand, all right? Um, all right, let me show you. All right, let's look. Really, I'm focused on, because you already know the underlay. I'm, I'm using like my, my standard um, underlay for my fill stitches. Actually, I put a uh, tatami tatami. Okay. Actually, it should have been. I'm going to keep it like that. Um, usually, I put an edge run here. So I don't know if by mistake I left it tatami. I like how it looks, so I'm not even going to touch it. All right. But up here, edge run, double zigzag. I'll show you how. See, this is where it was changing my settings here. All right, bam. My underlay on my um, sand stitches, just a center run. These little small ones, they got the standard underlay. Uh, so yeah, for my for my sand stitches, my like my rounded sand stitch, I'm just keeping center runs, center runs, and then I'll talk about the text in a bit. Um, but pull comps, they're all 0 0.60, all right? That's like my sweet spot when I'm digitizing, when I'm tracing exactly like how the design is, okay? When I'm not bothering putting overlaps, I'm putting a pull compensation of 0 0.60. Sometimes it might seem a lot, but when you have a lot of, objects butting against each other okay it's gonna give it enough space to overlap all right so let me push play here um even before that this is my favorite page i like to show how many trims all right right here it's showing 18 trims and really the 18 is coming from the text all right without the text i have three trims so this is what I'm going to put as a download. So right after this class, actually, right after this class, give me like an hour to kind of take care of some business. But this is the this is the template I'm going to put up for free download, right? It's what I have on my hat. So it's already, I already tested it for a hat. So if you're trying to put it on a hat, put it on a hat, you could put your own information here, right? You could put your own text, and then I'll talk about the text in a bit, but let me push play real quick. All right, so here, oh, this is actually very important here, okay? I'm doing an under, I'm doing a um, global underlay, but notice how I just made this global underlay, right? I'm just going from left to right with a zero degree, a zero degree stitch angle, okay? I'm just pushing, since I know it's going on a hat, okay, let me go on bigger right here. Since I know it's going on a hat, now we have to be able, now we have to, we got to, we got to do things in order, right? We already, we, we always learn bottom up, center out, bottom up, okay? We, we, we only break the rules when we have to, right? So right here, starting from top, working our way up and pushing that fabric, what we want to do. We want a nice flat area for a hat. Okay, so I'm going from left to right and then I'm gonna switch it up, right? And then I'm gonna kind of go at a diagonal. Uh, no particular reason why I'm going at this angle and just kind of pushing everything out. And now I'm starting this, now I start this, um, this first part is the center. So I have a underlay tatami. I put a double tatami. Usually I wouldn't do that, but you know it's already there. I tested it out; it's good. So I'm just gonna keep it that. Um, we'll see what happens if I um, if I just turn it into a uh, edge run, right? Let's speed this up a bit, and then I'll make it where it stops at the trims. I want this whole part. I don't want any trims in between. So I'm just going from this center part 
and then it's gonna walk to the next to the bottom part okay it's gonna walk and now it's gonna do this portion you can see like the stitch here so i did a double zigzag underlay so cindy i'm seeing your question here about if i'm using a structured cap so that's what i'm using and that's what i have it on right now i stitched it out on a structured cap um i'll probably run the same thing on a uh, non-structured cap also so and then yeah i'll have the download by tonight so then it goes up does the same thing bam all right let's speed it up a tad bit bam it's gonna walk and do the sand stitch right and it's gonna walk oh yeah that was it okay okay that's the outer circle right there the outer and now it's gonna do i have it blue but i stitched it out black so you can see bam right there right so that in that order and now it's gonna cut and do this other part this outside part and it's gonna just close up that gap bam perfect all right so so without the text it's 7400 stitches all right, as soon as I put the text, okay, so that went up. All right, one thing about text, uh, I kind of talked about text last week, how I go ahead and I bend. You can see how I bend this. Mm. Yeah, H, let's say we're like Romero threads, right? You can kind of see how, um, what I use this part here, the any shape. So in any shape, I could kind of form how I want it to look, right? So kind of form it up right there. And let me tell you setting wise, because actually pull comp, okay? So standard 0.17, I put it at 0.25. It gives you an extra little umph, right? But very important here is uh, underlay. I like to, this is a six millimeter text, okay? So we're kind of like in the small size. It's not at five millimeters, but you know, six, still considered kind of small. Uh, center run underlay. But what I do is I change it at 1.8, the length. 1.8 uh, standard is 2.5 I feel like um, the standard setting a lot of times for small text uh, it tends to slip the underlay tends to slip and it shows through so I like to put uh, anywhere between 1.5 1.8 when I'm working with small letters okay and then this one the SD so I use this font Turian, very thin font. There's certain fonts that they come in thin, all right? They're digitized real thin. If you try to stitch them out, you're not going to really see it. So what I do, I pumped up this pull compensation, 0.60. So when I stitch it out, it looks perfectly normal, okay? Perfectly normal. A lot of the cursive fonts, um, built-in fonts, this is with any digitizing software a lot of times the cursive fonts they did they digitize them very very thin to the point where sometimes you can't even see it okay so i like to just bump up this pool compensation to a point where it looks normal okay it looks normal by the time you stitch it out all right um and then let's see this right here um uh, jose jimenez is there a need for a zigzag on the sand stitch? If you're talking about the underlay, you don't. So I didn't put any uh, zigzag underlay on any of the sand stitch. I just put a, um, sometimes it does help. We do have a lot of thread on top of thread here. Um, so we don't need a lot of underlay on that. Okay. If you feel like you see gaps and you, you know, and you don't want to bump up the density too much, you could add a Z 
zigzag underlay on the sand stitch. All right. So, bam. and then on these, the reason why I have a lot of thread cuts, because I didn't want any jumps between the threads, between the letters. So I had a, a cut be, after every letter. That's why I had these uh, 18 trims. But without the letters, I had three three trims. All right. So this file is going to be available. You could dissect it. A lot of the information that we learned today, you could kind of play, uh, play it and you can measure it to kind of see exactly the settings but a lot of the settings is the similar ones the 0.60 that's like my sweet spot right there right now everybody has their own style of digitizing right sometimes it might be faster or with experience you could just add the over overlaps as you're digitizing all right here sometimes it's less thinking when you're just doing a perfect trace it's less thinking and then at the very end, you add your pool compensation, okay? And I would say a lot of times that method is going to take you like 98% all the way. Worst case scenario, you're making little tweaks here and there. All right. So look out for that design. And then you already know this is a big information. Will the push pull info be in your book? You already know it's going to be a main, main topic because, like I uh, like what I said in the beginning of the show, gaps, push pull, this that's like our number one enemy in embroidery. Okay, because when you see a gap, when a customer sees a gap, something's not lining up, it's an eyesore. Like you could see it from a mile away. Sometimes you might say, oh, you know what? The customer is not going to notice. No, they're going to notice. Okay, they're going to notice. And a lot of times, it's like you saw that. It's just a little minor tweak or a little setting where we got to compensate, right? That was like the key word of the day, compensate, and just lift it a tad bit to the other side. All right. Um, so it's not posted yet. Give me like an hour or two hours. Uh, I'm gonna post it on the description here, on the on this page, on this um, video page description that we're all here. All right. Um, just real quick, I know I, f I always forget to say it every every show. If you could put a quick like, okay, hit a quick like. Let YouTube know, okay. Let YouTube know that we are in the house. We are learning embroidery every monday okay for the first half of this year from january 1st i'm gonna say i think i think there's a monday no for july falls on a monday let me see no july 2nd no july 1st all right from january 1st that was episode number one to July 1st, okay, 2024. We're going every Monday live, okay, Monday live. Unless I, unless if I have duty, all right, so in a couple of weeks, like in two more weeks, I have duty, which I'll prepare a pre-recorded video with a ton, a ton of information. That's the only time when I don't go live is if I have um, duty, right? So you already know I'm in U.S. Navy. And duty, right? It's something that comes with being in the Navy. Um, but we're going live the half of the year, right? Second half of the year dedicated to two things business-wise, right? Um, Romero Threads side, right? Uh, the book, right? Of course, the book, that's like the big thing for this year. And number two is getting ready for the holiday season, uh, sales holiday season, because that's our like bread and butter right there. And then our, our we start prepping for the holiday season in August. So August, September is like preparation. October, November, December, it's all holiday. All right. So definitely, definitely. 
the learning don't stop, right? Even on, on our end, we're constantly learning materials. I got a bunch of boxes downstairs, stuff that we're experimenting with. And a lot of stuff that I learn, I want to pass it on to the embroidery community. All right. So everything that I learn, I push it out. And trust me, we're always learning. It's a nonstop learning. I hope everybody learned something today, a little bit about pool compensation. Um, now we know if we have a gap, why is that gap occurring, right? Now we know and how to counteract that gap. All right. So I do want to thank everybody for stopping by today. Hit that like, hit that share. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll see you next Monday. All right. Peace out everybody